Okay, what we're going to go over here is just a dollar value LIFO method here and how we'd handle our inventory valuation. And what we're going to just be looking at some basic differences here between a single pool inventory here and multiple pools of inventory. So let's first for this uh, dollar value LIFO or what LIFO stands for here. That's where we have the, our inventory where we account for it as last in first out. That's where the last goods purchased or made are used first. In in either case here, if we're working with single or multiple pools here, we have to determine some base year inventory here, and then we have to have some current year inventory or inventory transactions that we have during the year here. And what we have to do is adjust these current year inventories back to the base year inventory here. And uh, for our example here, we're just we're just not going to go through all the numbers. We're just going to be looking at the basic differences here. And we would just have, in this case, our base year would be the beginning of the year, January 1st. And our end of the year, what we'd be looking at is 1231 or the, uh, the last day of the year here in December. So the diff in either case here, we're going to have these a base year inventory where we're going to have some items here. Let's just say they're uh, uh, different models of inventory or products that we're selling in here and would be a, uh, where we have product A, product B here, and product C. So what we've, the basic difference here when we're talking about this single pool beginning inventory, we're going to have some base layer here where we're going to total and we're going to be looking at these uh, different items here or our different product classes here as one aggregate amount or one total amount here. But when we're working with this multi inventorial inventory pool here where our big we're going to have some beginning inventory base layer, we're going to be looking at uh, in, in well with the multiple pools, we're going to be looking at each one of these product lines or these product classes as separate units here. So for our just for our example here for a base year inventory we have some beginning quantity here in our inventory and at a, a specified price here, beginning price here, and then we calculate a, the quantity times the price we, and we for each of these products, product lines here, and we come up with a base year inventory, a, a value here that they're worth here at the beginning of the year. And then if we move over here to uh, our current year, again we have some quantities purchased here at a specific price, some quantities sold at a specific sales price here. In either case, uh, we're going to be looking here, just looking, we use these the same example here. And uh, again, for either case here, we have to come up with some ending inventory in units, the number of units we have in ending inventory. And we do that here uh, for the single um, uh, pooling items here and the multiple pooling will come up with an ending inventory e for each of these items here. So we just take the beginning, let's say item A here, the beginning inventory for item A plus the quantity purchased here for item A or uh, and less the quantity sold here gives us an ending inventory amount. Now, now uh, we would do that for each of our our cl product classes here, or have we how, where we have them divided up here between A, B, and C. So we come up with an ending inventory amount for each one of these, both for the single and the multi-pooled inventory class, uh, uh, items that we're looking at here, and then we have to determine some ending inventory uh, base at the base year dollars here. This is where we take our ending inventory for each one of those items here, A, B, and C, times the beginning of the year price that we have for them, and we come up with some total cost here for each of those product lines or those inventory classes or item classes that we have here. And with the uh, uh, with the uh, single pool method, we're going to come up here with a total base year cost. We're just going to total up our total ending inventory times the uh, beginning price here and for each of these items. And then we kind of come up with a base year cost just by summing all these amounts here between items A, B, and C. And then f we for our ending inventory at the current dollars here, same thing. We just take our ending inventory here for A, B, and C, each of those items times the price, the purchase price that we pay for them during the year here and uh, the quantity times the price equals the total cost here and that's for ending inventory at our current year dollars here and if for the uh, single pooled items we're just going to single pool method we're just going to total all a b and c the total amounts here we come up with a current year cost here of 547 dollars 
Now the difference that we're going to be looking at here is how we classify or how we calculate our price index here. And this is a basic thing that we have to either calculate internally or we have to have an external price index here for this dollar value LIFO method. Now uh, this, is the, this is where the difference comes in here when we talk about the single pooled price index. We take the gross amount here, the ending inventory at our current um, dollars that's based on the current purchases for the year here. We take the current cost, in this case it was $547,000, and for the single pool price index, we take that ending inventory at the current year dollars here and divide it by the ending inventory here at the base year dollars. So our current year dollars was $547,000 here. And then for our base year cost, that we had calculated the aggregate amount here at $450,000. So we take the ending inventory at the current year dollars here, 547000 divided by the ending inventory at our base year dollars, the aggregate amount here of 450000 And we come up with a single pool price index here of 1.216 by making that division. So we have one price index that we're going to use here for this, uh, for our inventory calculations in the future here. Now with the multiple, uh, multiple pools, we have um, a price index for each pooled item. So what we have here is those items A, B, and C. We develop a price index for each one of those separately here. We don't look at the uh, one gross price index. We look at a price index for each separately here. So that we just take here. We take uh, for item A here, for example, we just take the ending inventory. Again, let's look at it here on this formula. Same formula here, ending inventory here at the current year dollars versus divided by the end in inventory at the base year dollars and we come up with a separate price index here for each of them. We use this same formula here, but let's look at, again, this multiple pools. For item A here, we had, uh, let's say here, ending inventory at our current year dollars was $77,000 here, and we divide it here um, by the ending inventory here at the base year dollars. That was $70,000 here. So we just take the ending inventory at the current year dollars here and divide it by the ending inventory here at the base year dollars. And we do that here for each of the uh, item classes that we have here. So for item A, we come up with an, uh, a separate pooled price index here, a multiple pool price index, or a separate price index of 1.10 here. And then for item B, would we come up with another price index of 1.20 here. And for item C, we get a separate price index. Again, we go through the same division here, ending inventory divided by the base year uh, cost here for it. And we come up with a price index here of 1.25. And then we can use that uh, separate price index here for each one of them to determine what the base year dollars are here and we would just take the ending inventory here at the current year dollars divided here by that price index and that gives us the in, uh, ending inventory here at the base year dollars and we would just do that here for each of these items here a b and c here so you can see here with the multiple price index we use the we calculated a separate price index for each of these and with the single pooled item here we just have this gross or this one aggregate price index that we'd use so next we'll just go look at the how we'd value this ending in our uh, ending inventory using this lifo dollar value lifo method uh, looking at the single pooled pricing, how would you single pooled price index versus this multiple pools, pooled price index, and we'll make this comparison. Now let's look at just the basic difference here when it comes to calculating our ending inventory here in our LIFO dollars, and we'll look, look at the single inventory pooling versus this multiple inventory pooling. Now for the single inventory pooling, we had this one price index here. So our ending inventory here in LIFO dollars, we have to we'll have one base layer here, and that was that three hundred eighty thousand dollar beginning inventory times a one point oh price index here, and it gives us an. Uh, amount here of 380,000. And we have, with this single pooled inventory, we're going to have one incremental layer here. We're going to have, in this case, it was a $450,000 aggregate amount here of the base year cost, less this beginning inventory amount here of $380,000 times this 
aggregate or a price index. There's one price index here, 1.216 here, and that gives us a value here. The, the uh, incremental layer here, we come up with a inventory value. So we just add this base year layer here to this increment, this incremental layer here based on this single pooled uh, index here, and that gives us an ending inventory and a LIFO amount here. Now with the multiple inventory poolings, I'm not going to go through all of it here. I'm just going to go through the basic uh, difference here. And with the multiple layers, we're going to come up with the ending inventory value here at our LIFO dollars. And what we do here is we come up with a layer here. We're going to have this base layer for each one of these items here. And then we're going to have an incremental change here for the items or inventory change here. So in item A here, we're going to have a base layer here. In this case, it was $60,000 here. And we can go down and look at our base year inventory cost here. And then we had an ending inventory here in our base amount here. And it was $70,000 in this case. So we have to account for that increase here in that ending invent or that increase here of ten thousand dollars between the sixty thousand dollar beginning balance here and the seventy thousand dollar ending balance here in our base in our inventory costs here and in this case we use that separate price index that we calculated for each one of those so a here has a separate price index the incremental difference times that price index here gives us uh, an amount here so what we would do here is we go through that for items items B here and item C. We start out with the um, base amount here and then we we have to config, figure that out here, the base layer, and then we have to come up with that incremental layer for each one of these. So we do that for items A, B, and C here and we total those um, amounts here that we calculated and we come up with a, a total ending inventory amount here in that dollar value LIFO here. So uh, the difference here, uh, remember when we looked at the ending, uh, the single amount, we just come up with one base amount here and then one incremental layer. Now with this uh, multiple inventory pools, we have to do it for each one of these items here. We have to come up with a base layer here plus any incremental increase here in our inventory amount. And then we come up with, in either case, we come up with an ending inventory here in and our dollar amount here based on this LIFO inventory.